Hello everyone and welcome to Religious Emphasis Week. My name is Vivian Monica and I am a graduating senior from Lagos, Nigeria, majoring in biology. I am also a co-captain for the Glenn Smith basketball team, the treasurer of Pre-Med Society, and a student supervisor at the Religious Life Office. This week we will be highlighting the special roles of faith and religion in the history of the United States and in the development of the world. Thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this week and stay tuned with us. Good morning, everyone. My name is Keelan Patterson, and I have the humbling experience of serving as your 2020-2021 SGA president here at Flint Smith College. Right now, I'll be giving you the opening prayer. If everyone will please assume the position of prayer. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you. We know there are infinite things that we can do for you, and we know that there are infinite things that we have done for you, and we just want to thank you for everything you have ever given us in our lives, Lord. We understand that we may sin and that we may not do things to your liking, but you still give us chance after chance, and you allow us to be human here on this earth, dear Lord. We ask that you bless everybody today, dear Lord, as they go through their weeks, dear Lord. And we hope that you bless everybody that is a part of Religious Emphasis Week, dear Lord, so that they may have, they may keep your name and your mind and yourself in their, in their bodies, dear Lord, while they go through the week, dear Lord. They understand that everything is for you. We understand that without you, there would be nothing. We pray for everybody who was on who was on schedule for this week, and everybody may do things to the best of their abilities. We hope that you bless Philander, bless the world as we continue to dive through this pandemic and get out on safety on the other side. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Good evening. Welcome to the second night of the Religious Emphasis Week celebration. It is a week long experience of praise and worship and preaching. And we give honor to God for the awesome job, the awesome job. Enough is enough by Pastor Parks. Great job, Pastor Parks. Tonight, tonight is no different. We have one of our alums. We've chosen this year not to go far. We have chosen preachers and ministers on the campus of Philander Smith College to lead us in our religious emphasis with celebration. Today, tonight, tonight, uh, our preacher will be none other, will be none other than our very own alum, the Reverend Elder Kevin Coop Cooper. Amen. You all know uh, Reverend Cooper. He is a uh, 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 a much loved and sought after person in the Philander Smith College community. And he is a preacher's preacher. He hails uh, from the D.C. area, but is a proud member of the Church of God in Christ and now is serving in Pine Bluff, Arkansas at the Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. And so brothers and sisters, I pray uh, students and faculty and staff that you open up your hearts, open up your minds, open up your spirits, brothers and sisters, as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. We are very thankful to God for all of the singers and minstrels that have lifted their voices, amen, to engage us in this worship experience. But brothers and sisters, all oh, we're in for a treat tonight, that after the singing, after the music ministry that is presented on tonight, the next voice you will hear will be none other than our very own, the Reverend Kevin Cooper. Give him a great big hand clap of praise as he prepares to come, amen.
Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. I don't know about you, but that has been my testimonies on many occasions. I had to encourage myself when nobody was around. My mama wasn't around. My daddy wasn't around. My pastor wasn't around. Reverend Yah wasn't around. My friends, my brothers and my sisters. I had to make up in my mind that I'm going to encourage myself in spite of what is going on in my life. And so what a befitting song that sometimes you just have to encourage yourself. Go ahead and write in the comment box. I'm encouraging myself. I'm I'm encouraging myself. I don't need no, no pep rally. I don't need no cheerleaders. I don't need a pep squad. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord, in the Lord. I'm encouraging myself. What a joy it is to be here tonight with each of you and to be able to preach for my alma mater, dear Philander Smith College. It is always a joy that anytime I get to do anything for my alma mater. And so I am so ecstatic and I'm so excited on tonight about this opportunity. Before I go any further, I just wanted to make sure that I say thank you to our, our esteemed president, Dr. Roderick L. Smothers. Uh, what a great president we have and I'm always excited to do anything at Philander Smith College, and I thank God for his leadership. And it is my prayer that God will continue to use him and strengthen him in this season of Philander Smith College. And you know I can't go any further without thanking our own very own dean and our very own chaplain, Reverend Ronnie Miller Yao. I thank God for Reverend Yao. Thank you, Reverend Yao, and your committee for this opportunity to be able to share uh, the word of the Lord and what God gave me, I'm telling you, I'm always nervous about any time I have to preach uh, for my school uh, because it, it just means the world to me. It just means the world to me. And I would be remiss if I did not thank God for my own church, uh, Tabernacle of Faith, Church of God in Christ, Pine Bluff. I just want to say hello to all of my members. I happen to pastor the greatest church in the world, and that's Tabernacle of Faith, Church of God in Christ in Pine Bluff. Uh, if you would, uh, turn your Bibles to uh, Mark, the fifth chapter, and we're going to go to the 25th through the 29th verse, and then we're going to skip to the 34th verse. And I'm reading uh, the King James Version. Again, that's Mark chapter 5, 25, 29, and then we're going to skip to 34. And it reads, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians. And had spent all she had and nothing was better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garments. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. 34. And when he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. If I can talk to you briefly from this topic, choices. Choices. As we maneuver through this thing called life, we oftentimes find ourselves stuck in this place called in between whether it is in between relationships, in between jobs, in between circumstances, in between joy and sorrow, in between commitment and it's complicated, in between forgiveness and reconciliation, we find ourselves having to make choices. So here it is in Mark 20, and here it is in Mark 5, uh, verse 25 uh, through 39, the text highlights a woman with an issue, an issue that had been plaguing her for 12 years. The text says that, uh, that this woman had visited multiple physicians in pursuit of trying to get relief, answers, and healing, only to find herself broke, answerless, and worst of all, still bleeding. Can you imagine the anguish and frustration, the humiliation of having to be poked, examined, and tested for 12 years, only to find yourself leaving the same way you came. So something happens to this woman. Something happens to this woman. She, uh, she came to the realization and, 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 and instead she, uh, instead of trying to fix 
the problem by visiting all these specialists and visiting all these nurses and visiting all these physicians. This woman had made, had to make a choice. Now understand the choice that, that she had to make was not an easy choice because, because of uh, her condition, because of her ailment and because of the Levitical law, she was considered to be unclean, which would put her life in danger because she was considered to be unclean she had to be isolated she could not be around folk and if anybody was to touch her she would be considered unclean so i would submit to you that this woman uh is where big mama would say between a rock and a hard place this woman had an issue. This woman with issues finds herself in between brokenness and breakthrough, healing and humiliation, death and deliverance. But she it does not stop her from making her choice. Beloved, understand that this this woman had an issue, had to make a decision that could alter her life forever. She had to choose a life of hopelessness or healing. And I would submit to you that she chose healing. Anybody made up in their mind that I, I, I'm choosing healing. I'm, I'm choosing healing. I'm, I'm choosing healing. So uh, she made up in her mind that, you know what? Not only am I choosing healing, but enough is enough. I dare you. Just write in the comment box, enough is enough. Go ahead. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Go ahead and put some likes up there because enough is is enough enough is enough can you see this woman this woman ca uh, crawling on the ground this woman hands dirty her hair dirty sweat rolling down her face a uh, blood on her clothes can you imagine the stench of dried and rotten blood on her flesh but she says to herself i don't care what i look like i don't care what i smell like i don't care how dirty i get because I have made a choice. Can you imagine all of the disappointments, all of the sleepless nights, all of the tearful mornings that played in the resuscitations of her mind? But she makes up in her mind, I'm not going to stop. I have made a choice. Can you hear the enemy telling her to just lay there and give up? But she keeps on going because she tells herself, I'm not going to give up. I got to keep going because I made a choice. Can you see her as she gets closer to Jesus? Jesus, her, the pain of her ailment intensifies. Uh, she finds herself in between consciousness and unconsciousness because of the amount of blood that she lost. But she keeps telling herself that I made a choice. I made a choice. And in some kind of way, she forgets about the crowd. She forgets about the pain. She forgets about the people. And all she says and all she can see is, all I can see is my miracle. I'm just trying to tell somebody that find themselves in between a life and death situation to keep going. Uh, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't uh, give in. But she, keep going. Keep seeing your miracle. Keep seeing your breakthrough. Breakthrough. Keep seeing your uh, your deliverance. Keep going. This woman, this woman, this woman makes up in her mind that I made a choice and I am in pursuit of my miracle. I am in pursuit of Jesus. And the text says that uh, she says to herself, "If I may touch." But his clothes, I will be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And he says, what to her? He says, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I just, for some reason, keep hearing the song of Mary, Mary, that says, there will be mountains that I would have to climb and there will be battles that I would have to fight. But victory or defeat, it's up to me to decide. But how can I expect to win if I never tried? And I, they go on to say, I just can't give up now. And I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I can't 
believe or I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I come to tell you that you need to make up the choice and know in your mind that guess what? God didn't bring you this far to leave you here. He didn't leave you. He didn't bring you this far for you to give up. He didn't bring you this far for you to throw in the towel. But I want you to be like this woman with the issue of blood that say, I'm not worried about people. I'm not worried about what I look like. I don't care what people are going to say about me. Only thing I see is my miracle. The only thing I see is my breakthrough. The only thing I see is my deliverance. The only thing I see is my liberation. I have a choice to make and I choose Jesus. I have a choice to make and I choose freedom. I have a choice to make and I choose my miracle. I have a choice to make and I choose the promises of God. I know the plans in Jeremiah 29 and 11 says what? I know the plans I have for you, save the Lord to prosper you and to give you expected in. I'm just trying to tell you to make the choice to live. Make the choice to live. Don't get weary in your well-doing for you shall reap if you faint not. This woman had, this woman had a choice to make. She chose to go after Jesus. She says, another version says, what if I can just touch the hem of his garment? I know I would be made whole. She, she, has, she already understood in her mind that if she could just get to the hem, she would get to him. She already knew in her mind, if I can just get to the hem. I understand that this woman will probably step on dirt all in her fingers, all on her hands, all on her clothes. But it did not stop her from pursuing getting to him. I just want to tell you on this religious emphasis week that you got to make a choice, but I'm telling you to choose to live. I'm telling you to choose to dream again. I'm telling you choose to love again. I'm telling you to choose to forgive. Don't get stuck in a hopeless situation. Don't get stuck in your issue. Don't get stuck in your problem. Listen, I don't care what they tell you. I don't care if they said you're going to be just like your daddy. I don't care if they say you're going to be just like your mama. Listen, you choose life. Choose to keep dreaming. Choose to keep loving. Choose to forgive. Don't get stuck in your issue. Can I tell you that I'm so glad that they didn't give this woman a name, but they identify her as a woman with an issue of blood. Because that resonates with me that I understand that I'm not a, I'm not a woman, but I'm a man with some bloody issues. Many of us can attest to having some issues that are bloody. Isn't it something that this woman has? Everybody knows her business. Can you see that woman with the trail of blood? What is it when everybody knows your bloody issue? Everybody knows your bloody problem. But in spite of what everybody could see what she was going through. She said, I'm going to press on anyway. I'm choosing my miracle over misery. Can I tell you to do the same? To choose your miracle over misery. Can I tell you to choose praise over your pain? Can I tell you to choose your freedom over fear? You have a choice to make. Philander Smith, you have a choice to make. Son and daughter, you have a choice to make. Faculty and staff, you have a choice to make. Community partner, you have a choice to make. I'm telling you to choose your miracle over misery. What a joy it is to know that the only thing we got to do is get to him. And he will make us whole. Know that there is a difference. He not only just healed her, but he made her whole. I just want to let you know that if you decide to keep pressing your way, keep pursuing your miracle, keep pursuing your breakthrough, even with tears in your eyes, even when it hurts, even when it's shameful, if you continue to keep going. God is not only going to heal you, but he's going to make you whole. What are you talking about, Coop? Why are you talking about healing and being made whole? Healing. You ever 
fail or cut yourself. You know that sometimes when you, the wound or the sore, it'll heal. The thing about it is that it'll leave a scar. But when you're made whole, that's when Jesus make it look like it never even happened. It's almost like saying that I, I don't look like what I've been through. Listen, beloved, you have a choice to make. Choose life. Choose love. Choose freedom. Choose to dream. Choose to write again. Whatever it is, but I want you to choose to pursue Jesus. Listen, I say this to my church every Sunday. It's not a Sunday that I don't say this to the people of my church, and I want to say it to you. Belanda Smith College, Office of Religious Life, every student, every faculty, every staff, every community partner, every friend of the institution, every enemy. It doesn't matter, but I want to say this to you. Listen, I love you, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Again, choose life. God bless.
Father God, we thank you, we love you, we praise you, we honor your holy name. You alone is the, you alone deserves our worship, our praise, and our honor. I thank you, Lord God, for allowing Brother Coop to speak to us, speak to our minds, speak to our hearts, and speak to all of the things that we deal with on a daily basis. I ask that the word that was given to us today will be written on our hearts and we will not sin against God. And I thank you for continuing to forgive us for all of our sins and loving us, delivering us, and blessing us. Let us have a blessed, prosperous, and productive week in the name of Jesus. Amen.